been reminded of the importance of hope. Because let me just say this, this is what hope looks like. It's, it's that belief that we can be better, that we can do better for our kids. That even in our darkest hours, there is always a brighter day ahead. And if we're willing to work for it and fight for it, we can make it happen. Hope is what keeps our better angels alive. It has been the driving force behind everything we've achieved these last eight years, and it has been at the heart of my life and my husband's life since the day we were born. And I think that one of the reasons this election has been so difficult for so many of us is because that's what's being lost. In all the, the hateful, hurtful rhetoric we've been hearing, we're losing hope. You see, in this race, we, we have a candidate whose vision for our country is completely and utterly lacking in hope. A candidate who tells us that our country is desperate and weak that our communities are in chaos, that our fellow citizens are a threat, a candidate who calls on us to turn against each other, to build walls. And if you, you think this way, then it's easy to see this country as us versus them. And it's easy to dehumanize them, to treat them with contempt, because you don't know them. <laughs> You can't even see them. Maybe that's why this candidate thinks certain immigrants are, are criminals, instead of folks who work their fingers to the bone to give their kids a better life, to help build the greatest nation on earth. Because he doesn't really know them. <laughs> Maybe that's why he thinks we should be afraid of our Muslim brothers and sisters, because he really has no idea who they are. He doesn't understand that they are us. They are our friends, our family, our neighbors, our colleagues, people of faith, just like so many folks around the country. Maybe. Maybe that's why he sees veterans enduring the wounds of war as weak. Why he insults Gold Star families, folks who've spent months praying not to get that knock at the door. Heroes who love this country so much they're willing to die for it. He just can't see them. Maybe it's easy for him to mock people with disabilities because he's unable to see their strength and their contributions. Maybe that's why he demeans and humiliates women as if we're objects meant solely for pleasure and entertainment rather than human beings worthy of love and respect. He just doesn't understand us. Maybe that's why he calls communities like the one where I was raised hell. Because he can't see all of the decent, hard-working folks like my parents who took those extra shifts, paid their bills on time, folks who are raising amazing families, sending kids to college. Maybe he doesn't believe that people like us really exist. Because he does not see our shared humanity.